let's uh, let's pray let's pray together father we thank you father we bless your name lord we thank you god we thank you for being with us we thank you for leading us lord we thank you for leading us all these years and all these days father god we thank you that you continue to lead us lord master we bless your name lord we thank you for lord your your word says that uh, you know the end from the beginning your word says god the very thoughts that you have for us is to have uh, give us a hope and a future father we thank you that you've called us to grow lord strong in the spirit to be strong in the lord and the power of his might lord that's your will and desire and father god we thank you that um, lord you you want us to grow in our understanding grow in our knowledge of you and uh, lord of the things of the spirit and of your word we thank you lord we thank you father god lord even as we commit ourselves today master we pray lord that you would sharpen our thinking our minds may be renewed to the truth our minds oh father god may be filled and saturated with your word today hallelujah hallelujah yes lord lord we ask that you would saturate our minds lord saturate our thoughts father god fill our minds lord with your word father god and with the work of your lord the touch of your spirit lord may our minds be touched oh father god yes lord i pray god even as you touch our minds lord lord with your thoughts lord i pray that our will oh father god will be stronger god to make the right decisions father god that we'll be strong to make the right choices lord that we'll be strong in our minds strong in our thinking of oh, father god lord i pray that you'll be strong in our will that you will increase our will power lord to do the right thing to make righteous choices father god and to refuse oh god the works of the enemy to refuse compromise to refuse all those things oh father god that are not benefiting us lord we pray that you'll give us uh, lord strength now lord even right now lord touch us touch us lord that we might be strong i pray for clarity in thinking i pray father god i pray against all confusion of the enemy i pray against against all confusion of the enemy uh, all the strategies of the enemy to bring in fear all the strategies of the enemy to bring in confusion to bring in non clarity of things i just cancel it in the mighty name of jesus oh those things are broken the enemy's influence is broken the enemy's influence over our minds our imagination is blo- broken in the mighty name of jesus i just pray for a great release in the mind great release in the thinking in the place of um, a weight or a burden let there be a release let there be liberty in the name of jesus by the spirit of our god Hallelujah we thank you lord we come at this time into your mighty hands in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen okay so um last class we looked at uh, i think a little bit of uh, you know the creativity and also we moved into uh, what is called as critical thinking and we uh, and just like how we have creative thinking you know we also have critical thinking which means to to you know to think Uh, rationally to think of all the options to um, to not come to any false conclusions or assumptions and um, and all our rational for making decisions you know to be to be uh, to have um, uh, to have its roots in um, good thinking you know we looked at what is good thinking what is critical thinking and how we can refuse um or uh, you know false assumptions right um, so we we looked at that and um some of the videos also uh, we looked at okay, so today we'll look at another aspect we, uh, which is when we are working in groups right or even when we work individually uh, one very important aspect which is uh, aspect which which really we need to focus on and develop is decision making right when we come to make decisions based on all this you know based on creative thinking based on critical thinking uh we are you know as ministers of god or maybe as people who are working for um maybe in an office or a, or a ministry or maybe even as you are self employed you know you are doing your own thing uh own business uh we need to have a good understanding of how decisions are made or good 
um, making good decisions. Now that is very, very important. That's crucial uh, because once we make those choices, then we begin to live out of that choices, right? Um, we, we can maybe, maybe make a decision about ministry to say, okay, uh, we want to do this. We want to move here you know, as part of the ministry decision. We want to move here to this town uh, or to this country and start something. So that's a decision. Now, how did you base, how did you make your decision, right? Um, because uh, that is very important. Of course, uh, as believers, we have the Holy Spirit who is leading us. We have the Word of God uh, with us. Uh, or, uh, we have the Word of God to help us to, which is the, and, and you know, the Word of God is the lamp to our feet and light to our path. So uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that I can live my life. Uh, I can use the Word of God to see where I am going. I can use the word of God. I can depend on the word of God to to see where I'm going, so that I can I know where to put my foot, right? Where to put my feet, and uh, I can take where to take that next step. So that is what it means. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Um, and so, uh, so it means that you know it's short term decisions. Feet, you know, where can I put my where can I put my foot now? a lamp to our feet and a light to our path which means a path is something further on right so you can see further and see okay this is the path this path leads there and the word of god is a light to our path also which means something that is long term okay something that is for today tomorrow and maybe this week uh, decisions that need to be made the word of god sheds light some Long-term things, okay, this month, next month, next year, a few years from now, the Word of God illuminates the path, okay? Um, so uh, so we have that as believers, okay? But it's also important for us to learn some practical skills on how we can make decisions. Now, we have this, you know, these resources. We have the Spirit of God indwelling us, so which is wonderful, which gives us an edge, right? Which gives us, which really places us in a very, very advantageous position, advantageous place. Now we need to make use of it, make certain choices based on that, right? So let's look at, uh, very quickly look at decision making uh, in the sense to solve problems, to make decisions about uh, certain things, uh, what to do, what not to do, you know, certain decisions. So what is really, what is decision making, okay? Um, uh, let me just put it here on the chat. So decision making. Um, it means it's the decision making is the act of choosing between two or more causes of action. So what does that mean? It means that you have certain options, like option one, option two, option three, option four, option five. So we have all these five options, right? You can choose one of those or several of those. Now, what is the process or what, what do you, based on what do you choose? How do you actually come to a place of choosing uh, what is the best, right? What is the best? What will solve the problem? How do you choose that, right? So um, it, it's, it's good to understand that. It's good to learn. How do I do that? Um, so basically we are looking at decision-making to solve problems, but decision making also can be to, you know, to uh, to move into the next season of life, and also to make uh, certain conclusive um, uh, choices based on how God is leading us. Right. So one way by which we make decisions, and, uh, and a lot of times people do that, is uh, you know based on feeling. Like this is what I feel intuitively. This is this is what I feel on the inside. So I'm going to make a choice. Right? I'm going to make so intuition. Right. This is uh, based on our experience, based on our uh, uh, the information that we have. Right. So we we have a sense of feeling. Okay. Um, and also, you know, as believers, we know we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, who also you know, leads us. So we are being led by the Spirit uh, to make decisions. 
right, to make choices. So, so we have that advantage of having the Spirit of God speak to us, lead us, and we are being aware of that to make those choices. Um, so intuition. The other one is uh, reasoning. Right? The, the Lord who created us in the inner man, who, who gave us the Spirit to indwell us, who indwells us, is also one who created our minds and the way we function, what we think in our mind, the way we reason things out. He's the one who gave us. Right? And in fact, we are called to renew our mind, which means to renew the mind, we have to use the mind. Right? We are called to study, meditate on things. We are called to um, you know, confess. All that requires using the mind. Right? So reasoning is using the information that is, uh, what are the facts that are in front of us? Okay, what are what information do we have? Like, is it uh, when it comes to making some financial decisions? Okay, so what what do we have? You know, what is the income? What is the expenditure? What is the budget? You know, those kind of things. So we have make the decision based on some of the uh, facts and figures, the numbers that are before us, charts that are before us. Right. So we reason out and say. This is why I am taking this course of action because option one will not work. Option two, maybe it will work for some time, but option three is the best. And these are my reasons for it. Right? So reasoning. So based on this, we make decisions. Um, okay. So the best thing is to apply both, to use both, you know, to be intuitive the sense you sense what's in your spirit, but at the same time, don't reject reasoning, right? Uh, because a, a, a mind that is renewed to the word of God is a very strong asset, right? A mind that is renewed to the word of God will not cancel out the leading of the spirit, right? So that's very important for us to put that together, to, to use our renewed mind, to lock in, you know, to, to, to make, to establish what the Spirit of God is saying, so and and go with those decisions. So we need both. Um, so effective decision making. Let's look at a little bit of that. Um, so yeah, just a minute. Let me just put it on the chat. Um, you know, we can look at uh, some factors which uh, which prevent effective decision making, and we can avoid that. Okay, so one of the things is that we don't have enough information. We don't have inf enough information. Okay, what train should I take? Now, if I know about only one train, now that's not a good choice. Okay, that's not a good decision because the, let's say the train is only once a week and I know only about that train. Then I'm making, I'm not making a good decision about travel because I have to wait for that one train in that particular day of the week in order to make it. Now, but if I have information, what are those trains that are available? What are the time, timings at which they, they come? And what time do, does it reach? Now, with that information, I can make an informed decision. Like I can reason out and say, okay, this is convenient. This is not convenient. So let's take... Uh, uh, you know, and it's let's make a decision based on you know, all this information that we have and make a choice. So when we don't have enough information, then our decision making is hampered. Okay. Or it could be too much information, right? Too many, too many choices. And we and we, and we get a little bit confused saying, okay, you know, what do I choose now? Um, there are just too many things and everything seems to be similar or very uh, you know very close to each other uh, the differences are not much so what do i you know sometimes we we get into what is called as an analysis mode you know we're constantly analyzing analyzing uh, analyzing and not making a decision sometimes you know too much information also does that so um, but how do we solve that but so we look at information that is really required. Okay, we we kind of funnel out what is actually required. What is the information, and based on that, uh, we uh, maybe five, six, six, five or six things we make a decision if there's too much information. Okay, sometimes it could be that 
too many people are involved in the decision making process okay um so too many people in the sense uh, um it's not it's not just you maybe there are others who are involved in the process and uh, well nobody's coming to a conclusion right uh, and so um it's making things difficult right people have their own views people have their own ideas and uh, there's no conclusion that is reached right too many people sometimes uh, what makes uh, decision making difficult is also some selfish motives or vested interests which means that okay there are let's say it involves decision making involves people okay there is a group and you need to decide now if there are selfish motives right out of which people are saying okay we need to do this because it's convenient for me because i'm getting benefited okay then that's again not a good decision right because it's the the choice is made based out of selfish motive so that i get benefited and it's not looking at solving the problem or it's not like looking at making a decision which will help the entire group like which will be productive for the entire group so that everyone is benefited all right so if it's a selfish choice if there's a vested interest then it results in bad decisions uh and also uh it does not help right um so what is the other one emotional attachment as in as you're saying okay hey we, we we've already let's say you know you're in a certain space you're in a certain house and uh, you know the you've grown the family has grown and you need you need a bigger house right you need to move to a bigger house uh um, maybe it's something like that a uh, situation is like that but then you are emotionally attached to, to this house saying you know i i was born here the children are born here has so many memories wonderful memories and uh, you know i don't want to leave right or i i can't go to that place because uh, i'm attached to this you know this too many things um emotional attachments so that is also not helping us to make a good decision whereas you know it's not like you do not have the means it's not that you don't have the resources but you still don't make a choice to move to a bigger place uh, not because of the resources no resources are there but because you are emotionally attached to this right you're saying uh, i like this place a lot because of this this though it's not convenient though it's not comfortable though it's leaking when the rains you know though it's hot in the summer uh, i i'll stay because of these things that's a bad decision right so emotional attachments also help us uh, or you know sometimes make us uh, decide uh, make some bad choices okay or sometimes okay, this is the opposite of what what i said just now okay sometimes what happens is uh, there are there's no emotional attachment sense um you know you it's it's like this right um you you need to uh, be vested in it emotionally okay because one thing is uh, you feel that either way it's okay i just don't care right so there is no emotional attachment in the sense in the decision making saying uh, i don't really care it doesn't it doesn't help me it doesn't move me uh, you know so one way or the other you know it's it's okay it's fine so in that case what happens is certain bad decisions can be made right because you're not uh, you're not looking into it because you are you don't care right you're not one is not uh, attached to this thing you know you're not you're not interested in it you're not moved by it so you just say whatever is okay anything is okay so in that sense sometimes bad choices are made so to avoid this is to make effective decisions so when we when we do the opposite of it you know um maybe when there's not information not enough information you collect the right information when there's too much information you you know, take out weed out cull out and use only what is required 
uh, and then you know you do it if there are too many people involved in the process then you decide who are those key people who need to actually decide right who are going to who are authorized to make the decision maybe and also you know when it comes to vested interest to be discerning and see you know am i or even personally right am i making this decision because it will benefit me or am i making a decision because it will it is actually solve the problem right it will solve the problem it's good for the company it's good for the ministry good for the organization right even though personally i'm not benefited but it's good it solves the problem maybe personally i might have to sacrifice with things you know personally i might have to uh, maybe you know uh, forego certain you know uh, forego some sleep i might have to wake up early you know uh, or you know because i need to reach there on time but it helps the ministry it's helping you know so when there's no vested interest right emotional attachments and you know no emotional attachments so that we saw so this would help us to make the right or good decisions okay now the thing is um when we have a group okay individually we can make decisions but we also need the skill to make a decision as a group okay now the group has to decide and the group has to make a decision so how do we facilitate that right? because as leaders i'm sure that we will be leading a group right and you don't want to be the only person to make a decision right? so there are several ways by which uh, we make decision in a group some are good for certain tasks some are not right? so group decision making so we looked at decisions why decisions the importance of making decisions right and how not to make decisions or what will cause us to make bad decisions right now here we look at a group if there's a group how can i facilitate or how can we me being part of a group or as a leader of the group how can we make decisions right now there are several processes for that okay one is it's a unilateral decision or it's a very autocratic decision unilateral meaning one person decides one person so the leader decides and says okay this is what we are doing okay now certain tasks have to be taken that way certain decisions have to be taken uh, done that way okay because it's now in this particular decision there's no consultation okay the leader may not consult and say uh, will not you know consult uh, ask you you know what do you think do you think this is good the leader decides the leader makes the decision and that decision now the entire group has to carry out the leader decides that this is the time that we are uh, going or this is the time this is what we need to do and the group has to do it okay some now it's it's good for certain minor decisions okay um like certain decisions for which you need to actually decide quickly and you need to decide quickly and it's it's not a major you know it's not a big decision it's just a small decision uh and uh, it does not affect the whole group that much it's a minor decision and the leader needs to decide quickly uh cannot wait for everyone to come in and meet with everyone talk to everyone and decide so it's a decision is made okay but the thing is the problem with this is if it is repeated okay the leader makes it a habit to decide for the group okay i will decide you you just have to obey or you just have to comply with this decision if it's repeated and if certain inappropriate decisions are made or bad choices are made now the thing that choice is not helping the group in fact it, it places the group in a disadvantage right so then what happens is the group doesn't feel committed okay if you keep on saying okay this is what we'll do as outreach this is what we are going to do that's the thing i've decided no discussions then the group will do it but there's no commitment they're saying because they were not consulted it was not their idea it is your idea and so they don't feel that 
committed to carry out that particular choice right you see that so um, the, the some of the, the disadvantages is that there's no commitment so so they might do it in a half-hearted manner i'm doing it because you know if i don't do it i'll be out of a job because i don't do it you know i'll uh, you know uh, i'll be pulled up and asked questions so i'll do it but it's going to be a very hard half-hearted kind of a effort okay so that's uh, unilateral the second one is uh, what we can call as a hand clasp oops one second uh, meaning it's um, it's like you know i i let's say as a leader i make a choice and say okay um, you know why don't we do this and another person in the group um, says okay i second it you know I, I i agree with it let's do it okay so that second person may be a assistant leader okay you are the leader the other person in the group is an assistant leader then then the whole group is there so the assistant leader says yeah it's a good idea let's do it so it's like shaking hands no uh, the leader puts out the hand the assistant leader shakes hand it's a it's a hand clasp decision is made so this also is is good for certain certain uh, uh, certain situations you know because there is a suggestion and one person who also enters maybe you know it it's good when it when it when it's required for specialized decisions okay now not everybody in the group is a specialist in that field maybe it's something to do with uh, accounts you know not everybody knows accounts not everybody is a specialist maybe it's something to do with uh, uh, it right not everybody is is a specialist so the leader says okay let's do this and uh, let's do this kind of a thing um, maybe it's related to accounting etc and then the the other specialist in the group would agree with it and the decision is made okay so again so here the 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 one who made the decision the one who suggested it the one who agreed to it both of them have high commitment to the task right so they are committed to it and they they have high commitment so because they they are the ones who suggested and the same but the others they may not be as committed as these two are so that's the downside of it that's the flip side of it right then we have something like a what you can call as a click or or a small group which decides for a subgroup which decides for the entire group a close subgroup so it's like a core group which decides for the what is best for the group okay which which is also work so the group decides the group discusses the problem the group decides and uh, and the group the, the smaller group decides for the entire larger group so it's like a core group okay so this this is also one way of making a uh, decision uh, it, it has advantages because it's a group decision it's a it's a uh, what do you call a sample size you know uh, it represents the whole crowd or the bigger group and so it's a smaller group it's representative of that bigger group so they make that choice they make the decision and uh, it could work well because uh, not even though everyone was not consulted the by and large it it's a it, it's a representation of the group okay like you get feedback from a few people hey what do you think what do you think of the food okay what do you think of the food and maybe maybe uh, you checked with maybe there are 100 people in the in the entire group but you checked with about 25 25% okay and the feedback of the 25% based on the 25% you made a decision saying okay next time also we'll have the same menu okay why because this 25% felt that it was good right or or the opposite of it you know the 25% felt that it was bad so we're not having this um but that out of that 75 you know it could work well because it's a it represents that 100 okay there are men women maybe you know whatever different people it depends on how the what kind of a subgroup it is right uh, which represents the entire group um so it could work well but it need not also because 
the 75% which got left out of this decision may not be uh, thinking on the same lines as the 25. So you need to consider that. You know, what is this 25% like? Right? Uh, maybe the 75% are all you know, people from a different region, they have different tastes, right? And this 25% are all from, let's say 25% are from South, 75% are from North, okay? So the 25% whom we consulted are like, okay, rice is fine, we'll we'll do rice. But the 75% are saying, hey, we don't want rice, we want chapatis instead, right? But this 25% has made the decision for the bigger group. So it depends on what kind of a group this 25 percent is it could work well but it depends on that okay then the other thing is a kind of a voting system where the majority you know you you get everybody to uh make a decision you know it's like a vote okay guys here's a poll as an opinion poll what do you think should we start at 10 should we start at 9 everybody votes Okay, and you get a majority. Let's say 90% of them think that starting at nine is okay. The rest 10% thinks 10, 10 is okay. Now, for again, for certain decisions, certain tasks, this will be fine. You, know, you can take a majority. The, the problem, problem we encounter is, suppose that 90% who said nine o'clock we will start now, what if they are wrong? Okay, what if they did not look into certain things, certain factors? Okay, so they say nine o'clock is fine, and they voted, and then we went to the majority. The majority could be wrong. The majority could uh, could be the the way they arrived at that decision. Maybe they arrived at it without thinking through. Right? They say, "Oh, my friend, you know, it's like." Um, Sometimes, you know, in school, it, it happens. I, I remember, uh, hey, what group are you taking? You know, after you finish your 10th standard, what group are you taking? Uh, oh, I'm taking maths and science. Okay, I'll also take maths and science, right? It's not that it is, uh, the person didn't think through. They said, okay, you decided, I'll also do the same thing. Okay, so the people can vote based on that. Oh, you're, 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 this is what you're choo choosing? Hey, uh, you, know, you know, okay, I'll also choose this. They may not have thought through. They may not have thought through. Okay, uh, what is actually good for the entire group? What is what will solve the difficulty? Right. So majority doesn't mean that the majority is always right. For all you know, that ten percent which said ten o'clock, they might have made a very informed, well-informed choice. They might think, okay, these are people who work late, and so you know coming early will be difficult because the, the majority would have voted and then not show up at nine, right? Okay. Um, the other thing is consensus, which means it's a process. Consensus is it, the whole group has come to a decision. There has been consultation, there has been discussion, uh, and uh, and you know everybody is heard and then you come to a uh, come to a decision okay let me just put a few At the end of it you know there might even be a voting so it's a we see that it's a process each person is asked to make you know the best possible decision for the group um there are not too many proposals too many options you know you've limited your options and everybody's heard. Everybody says, you know, this is why I feel it's okay. This is why I feel it's not okay. Right? And at the end of it, you might even call for a vote. But then everybody has already said what they want to do or what they don't want to do. Okay. So, but the thing is, there are some uh, the, the advantages. Uh, advantages um, that if uh, this kind of a decision is made, then the group is very, very committed. Why? Because they decided it, right? So they made the choice, they decided, so they are. Good. They, they will say, okay, we made the decision, so we will carry it out. We decided that we will come at this time, so we will come, okay? Otherwise, it will be like, you only decided, we didn't decide, right? So here, in this case, compared to the first one, which is unilateral decision, 
is the exact opposite of that right so everybody got a turn to talk about the uh, advantages disadvantage and then finally said okay let's do this okay um now the so th those are some of the advantages okay but some of the disadvantages are again th the group could have discussed group could have been influenced the group could have you know, thought about something selfishly and come to a decision right so it may not be the right solution even though there was consensus right so there could be some people who are who are very very manipulative in the group saying you know many very manipulative manipulated the decision manipulated the emotions caused fear in people say hey if you do this you will you know you will end up uh, you know working late in office so you better not something like that in the conversation in the process of discussing uh, maybe they manipulated the decision right so like that so so maybe you know sometimes people just want to win the argument right what does that mean that means that okay um, here's a choice that i'm making and i just want to make sure that you know i'm i'm putting forth all these arguments and i want to win the argument at any cost you know i've given all the reasons and i want to you know win that argument i'm not i don't really care about you know is it benefiting you know but i've got so much pride in you know presenting this and sharing this i but i want the group to make this decision right so it could be that um, it goes against the right solution right so so sometimes it, it might happen also you know right and the other thing is of course it takes a lot of time because it's it's a process it takes time it takes time to discuss it and so on and sometimes we cannot uh we don't have the luxury of so much time right we we need to decide fast so so th those are some of the things you know if you notice you know i'm not saying what is the best form of decision making because it depends on the task it depends on uh you know what is the kind of decision or the criticality of the decision, outcome of making that decisions because some decisions are very very big it's going to affect the you know individuals in the organization or the group and uh, so you cannot take that lightly so one person can't decide right or maybe it involves a collective effort of a group everybody has to give 100% only then it will work right so let's say you you decide on finishing a work you know you or maybe your the group is making a let's say the group is making a film okay it's a it's a film of all testimonies or a, a video of something that you're making now it requires maybe five people in the group all of them to work hard for the next two weeks you know maybe they need to work 12 hours 14 hours every day in order to able to do that now who decides that we have to release it in two weeks we have to finish the video the group has to decide if it's only one person in the group saying hey i've decided you better do it then they may not put in they may if they fear that okay i might lose you know something at the end of it but that's not the right motive to do the job right it, it might not be excellent it might they might do it out of fear they may not have good ideas uh, they might put in a very they might finish it but it it's not really great right so the thing is you and also the other thing is that they may not also they say okay i don't want to do this right i can't put in that effort etc because why one person decided the others did not so um so all those disadvantages are there uh, but we need to consider what is the task and then take a make uh, employ the right method i just want to show um, a couple of videos which are which is really which are really good and um, you know which talks about uh, decision making that really works okay um you might have to listen a little carefully because this person speaks a little fast so um let me just put the video
Hi, I'm Edward Musio, CEO of Group Harmonics, and I'm going to tell you about group decision making that works. When you have a group of people that need to come to a decision, the first most important thing you need to do is decide how they're going to decide. There are a number of ways to do that. Here we have five people, a leader and four individuals, that are kind of all set up to be equals. Uh, one thing we can do is just say everybody's vote is equal and we make no change till everyone agrees. That's called consensus decision making. As you can imagine, it's rather slow. Often what we do is a modified version of that called the democratic method of decision making. In that case, we say if enough people vote yes on a change, it's okay if a few vote no, we still make the change. But in a sense, everyone's still treated as an equal. And the problem with that, although it is used in a lot of boards and groups like that, is that if people have specific expertise, that expertise doesn't always get weighed. So what we often do instead is we move to a different model. We put the manager in charge. And then we organize the team around the manager like this. Now here again, there are some choices we can make. One thing we can do is have the manager or the leader just tell everyone else what to do, like that. We call that a dictatorial method. Again, here we're not dealing with the expertise of the people. Usually what happens is something more like this. The manager talks to each of the people back and forth and then makes a decision. That's what's commonly called a consultative model of decision making. The problem with this though is again, if this is really a complex issue, with a lot of expertise, often what these people know is dependent not only on the manager, but on what everybody else knows as well. And so we start to need a picture more like this, in which everyone is talking not only to the leader, but also to everyone else. The picture is a little bit messy, and as you can imagine, you need a good meeting process to handle this complexity. In that meeting process, what happens is all of the members of the meeting teach. They teach to each other, and they teach to the decider. The decider's job is to learn as much as possible, and then ultimately to decide. And that's not decide the majority decision or decide based on popularity. It's to decide what he or she thinks is best based upon what he or she has learned, even if other people don't agree. Now here's the trick. These are smart people with expertise, and they're not going to necessarily agree with the decision. So before the first decision is made, you need to have a contract with your group called disagree and commit. Disagree and commit means that everyone agrees that once a decision is made, whether or not they agreed with it, they will do three things. First, they will explain the rationale of the decision when they talk about it to other people. They won't say, those dopey folks made this decision. They'll say, we made this decision, and here's why. The second thing is they will align their resources, and that's 100% compliance. Whether it's their own time, their groups, if they're managers, they will do what the decision requires 100%. The third thing, and this is a little strange, is they will continue to seek contrary evidence if they disagree, but without sabotaging the decision. Now, that's an odd balance. Why would you want to do that? The reason is, although you're implementing the decision 100%, you're continuing to file away contrary evidence that might not support it, putting it in a file quietly. Why? If the decision works out, you take that file and you throw it away. But if the decision doesn't work out, then you can bring that contrary evidence back to the group, and in the next decision-making process, you'll have that much more information. So, the next time you have a group of people that need to make a decision, before you do anything, Decide what model of decision making you're going to use. Consensus, democratic, dictatorial, consultative, or group consultative. And if you're going to do consultative or group consultative decision making, be sure you have a disagree and commit contract before you start. It'll make sure your team decisions are the best decisions they can be, and it'll make sure they stick. Okay, um, so just to reiterate what we saw, you know, there are all these different models that we went through. It's it's just um, is given a different name for it, right? Um, a dictatorial uh, instead of uh, you know, what we looked at as unilateral and so on. But then, um, um, but we just need to understand that maybe in a group setting, from what we have seen, we see that a group consultative method um, works best. Right. So consultative meaning the leader 
would check with each person. You know, if, suppose if I'm the leader, I'm checking with Dave, I'm checking with Kiran, I'm checking with Aaron, Kanan, Siddharth. Uh, I'm checking individually, okay, what do you think we should do? What do you think we should do? So based on your experience, based on your uh, knowledge, you know, you say, okay, this is what we must do. Okay, then I just put it down and then I make a decision. I say, okay, from what I've heard, this is what I can we can do. But if it's a group consultative, what happens is we meet as a group. Not only am I, you know, uh, asking Dave, but everybody is also listening, right? Kiran is also listening. Aaron is also listening. Uh, Kanan and Siddharth are also listening to what Dave is saying. And there is a discussion. So they're saying, Dave, but you're saying this, but, you know, but have you considered this? You know, this could not work. Then Dave says, yeah, actually, yes. Maybe maybe this will work, and then everybody is you know discussing that. So the group consultative will uh, will work because there are a lot more ideas that are generated, okay, and a lot more uh, uh, a lot more depth in thinking that can happen. But ultimately, it's uh, it's not uh, it's not a democratic kind of a thing. You know, it's not like the majority vote wins because it can be a bad decision. Right? But here, there is consultation, we are discussing, and ultimately, the facts are there, and the leader has to decide. Right? The leader decides, okay, I have all this, I've seen this, but maybe you know, now is not a good time to do this. Right? So that's the leader's call. The, leaders, you know, the leader um, is looking into the future, has more information, and maybe the leader feels that you know, now is not the time maybe we should do it two years from now this is good but maybe we should do it we should just stay now that is also a decision you know deciding or uh, coming to a place of saying we will not decide now is also a decision right so so that the leader decides the leader takes a call so um so that uh, this is something which is useful. This is something that we need to uh, grow in. Um, so what we'll do is next class, we'll look at another video um, on similar lines about you know making effective decisions as a group, because I feel that this is something that um, that can be a challenge, you know, because we'll we won't all make uh, you know uh, decisions for the group. We have to consult. We have to discuss. So how can we do that in a manner? that um, everybody is committed to and everybody also participates in it. And uh, so therefore, it's a blessing for the ministry, for the workplace, and for us as individuals. Okay, So we'll, we'll look at some more of that before we move on to the next topic. Okay, Okay, we'll stop here. God bless. Thank you. See you guys.